Ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to begin. The Irish Spaghetti Podcast. Like and subscribe. Please enjoy the show. Separated by birth, they have found each other once more. They will hunt. Tracking game like a Cherokee Indian. No girls allowed. I'm gonna rip your head off and shit down your neck. <laughs> Am I fucking this? No, no. Nah, nah. I can cut anything, dude. This is all gonna be gold. <laughs> you could cancel me out in the background right here, right? Okay, okay. This is fucking hilarious, man. <laughs> oh my god. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Irish Spaghetti Podcast. We're your hosts, Billy G, Nikki P. Nick, how are you? I am above average. Yeah, man. I feel, you know what? I'm feeling that same thing. Pretty above baby. average, okay, right? You know what I mean? There's like there's like regular people, and then there's like a cut above that, and then there's above the average, but well above the average. Yeah. Yes. Flying up. You flying know what up. I mean? Just flying straight ahead. Ooh, yeah, yes. baby. Okay. SpaceX, baby. We're on a rocket, and uh, nothing's stopping. <laughs> Here we go, man. You know. So we're happy to be back again. It's been a long time, a few days. And uh, we have some good show prep for you, but we have some things we want to address today. Yeah. Uh, what do you got so far, Billy? You know what? I wanted to tell everybody, all the new people, all the people that have been with us, I just wanted to say thank you. I think that big things are happening here. We were all excited today. We've got a lot more, uh, I guess, like interaction and stuff. That yeah, we got some there. nice comments. We yeah. got some likes. We got some interaction, like he just said. And uh, we have some questions that were posed to us that we wanted to address. So we're going to take a moment at the beginning of the show here to address some of our comments and our uh, followers here and uh, kind of let you in on what's going on behind the scenes. I'm not going to have any teeth by the end of the show. I'm going to grind my <laughs> fucking teeth to like dust by the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> so our last episode, we talked about Anthony Kumia and Bill Burr's kind of rivalry going on. That's something that's like kind of personal to us, but there's a large fan base of ONA fans that are still out there and they're kind of finding their, their way to our channel, which we appreciate. Thank you guys. Couldn't be more happy about that. The mature pest, right? The they're mature all grown pest. Up now, yeah, man. the you grown up I mean? pest. Yeah, but we dude. never grow up, man. We just no. stay the same. Exactly. There's a reason through. why we all enjoyed that show so much, and it's because if you could look at life and laugh and shit like that, then you were gonna enjoy that stuff. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So some of the comments that we got, uh, one of the gentlemen that posted on our video, um, his name is Sucks to Never Be Interesting. Great fucking name, by the way. Yeah. And he was talking about how our intro is so long and it doesn't need to be as long. And he was giving us like positive criticism and critiques, which we appreciate. But I answered him on the comments, but I also thought that other people might be uh, concerned about that or like curious about that as well. So we wanted to kind of address it a little bit. So the reason why that our intro, our montage is so long and it's so expansive, if you will, is because our thinking was that we needed a hook to bring people in to understand like kind of what the spirit of the show is and what our brand is. And we assumed that first time viewers will be hooked by that. 
and people that stayed with us that are already subscribers will forgive us for it being so long every time. So what I do is I add it to the chapter so those of you that actually watch the show consistently can skip ahead. But it's designed to bring in new viewers and to like kind of get them interested in the show more or less. So in the future, moving forward, we do plan on cutting that down and making that more processable, if that makes any sense. Um, go ahead and leave a like and a, and a comment if you want to do that now, if you think now's the time to do that. But that's the reasoning and the logic behind that. Plus, we spent all day at the park. So Plus, we, we spent all day at the park. We yeah, we worked hard on that, man. We worked hard on it, man. <laughs> we worked you know? really hard on that. If you build like a little nuclear power plant out of like cups and shit, you want people to see it. You know what I mean? Also, another comment that we got on Rumble, it was a negative comment. The, uh, the gentleman that watched it was like, I sat through a three minute long intro that was overproduced. And then I got nothing but bad sound quality and a bad camera angle. And we appreciate all of it. But I just want you guys to know that this is a very like, this is a startup company. Yeah. We started off with next to nothing. We had $500. Everything that you see and everything that's produced here is off of $500 worth of equipment. Our job shut down. So we took the opportunity to like kind of lean into it and build what we can out of it and get used to it. We're building skills. It's just me and this man that you see right here. Yeah. Everything, all the editing, the TV screens. I make every single movie poster. I make every single thumbnail. I wrote all the captions for every video, all the disclaimers. Literally every single thing that you see is just from me and him. And we're rookies. We came out of this. We're restaurant workers. We're regular guys just like you. We worked our whole lives. You know, I, I was a server. I was a bus boy. I was a food runner. I was a dealer. Billy, you were you worked at a grocery store. He was a server up until I met him. And just we're just regular guys just trying to make it. We're both like, we're old motherfuckers, yeah. man. My first job, <laughs> it was me, a guy with multiple sclerosis, sitting next to me doing the same job as me. And that always bothered me because I'm like, what am I doing? Like, is is if this guy could do the job that that I'm that I'm doing, then what am I doing? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I went everywhere in that grocery store too. Like, I'm bakery. sure you did. You well, it's grocery, so you bounce around the whole place. You know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, he's right. Like, we worked for everything. Like, how this how this even started was my grandmother died and she left us four hundred and ten thousand dollars and we said we're gonna <laughs> sink it into it and do it. So what you say? This no, is I'm not true. Just, <laughs> but yeah, but um, yeah, like. Uh, this is it. We all, we dreamed. This is our dream. We don't come from anything, and uh, and this is, and we're taking it step by step, right? Step That's by all step, we can do. and we have plans for constant progress. We're going to reinvest. We're going to up the quality and the equipment and everything as we go. So what we're saying is just thank you so much for watching in the first place. We're on a ride together, and we yeah. want to bring you guys with us, and we want to just keep building and building and building and see what happens. Yeah, any constructive criticism too in the comment section? I promise you, we are ears wide open. We're always listening. We're always willing to work with it. Uh, uh, negative, positive, anything in between, we are good with that. We are okay with this. We we, we sank no ego into this whatsoever. Mm -hmm. We want to make a show that we would watch, and if we would watch it, then you would watch it, and that's all we <clears> care about. That's and if it. it bombs, it bombs. If it succeeds, it succeeds. But the end of the day is this is all coming from the heart, yep. and it's what we really wanted to do. So we hope that you enjoy it on some level, and obviously it will get better as time goes on. Boom. So yeah, so yeah, that's that. Man. Yeah. So at any rate, we're very happy with the last episode's success. We broke new numbers, new highs. Um, it was a very milestone moment for us. We're kind of celebrating a little bit today, having a good old time with it. And again, thank you guys for subscribing. Thanks for watching. And I hope that we deliver in the future. And how we celebrated, uh, I think a lot of you would appreciate that. You know what I mean? Think Gavin McInnes. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> speaking of breaking numbers, Nick, the Super Mario Brothers, man. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay, okay, so... If you've watched this show for any length of time, we always talk about like movies and propaganda and how they push like a certain agenda and they try to like preach to you. And like if you just make something good, it's just going to be good. Well, someone made something good and the critics are trying to bash it and put it down and like lessen it more or less because it doesn't fit the narrative and all the political horseshit that's going on these days. But it's killing in the numbers. Yeah. And uh, go ahead, set that up. Well, so it's like, all right, and he's absolutely right. And it's always come to these, you know, paid for critics. And it bothers the hell out of me because it's like, if I went and made a movie right now and I checked all the like, you know, identity box politics, like, and I just went down the line of it, I promise you I'd get certified fresh 100%. I have to take a shit. That's why I keep moving like this. I apologize. <laughs> but I would, but I would get certified fresh 100% from all these so-called critics that, you know, um, yeah, I found the movie, you know, this this and that you know with some some buzzwords that they use Not all inclusive. the time yeah exactly and they and they would do their best for it honestly man i think that when they made super mario brothers they were literally made a movie that was like you know what just Let's, a fun yeah, movie kids family fun for the whole family have some good jokes where there's some callbacks some uh you know the the parents will appreciate it the kids will appreciate it a little when fan you, service yeah, yeah when you got an idea like that typically that's when the movies are doing okay because 
people are just so fed up of it and it shows they there's they're squashed the box office super mario brothers is killing everything in its mm-hmm. path and it's and it's um chris pratt and jack black mm-hmm. who's like kind of like the two Hollywood guys that are known for that. Like they, you know, I, I know everybody hates Chris Pratt cause he's like, you know, the, the strong Christian stuff like that. But Jack Black is I the like guy Chris that, Pratt. that, yeah, I love Chris Pratt. I love Chris Pratt. But Jack Black's the guy that like, doesn't, you know, you, you don't hear anything from him. No. Not even religious. Like, just nothing. Like, he just, you know, he's the cool guy. Outside of fun. him being at the uh, Madonna benefit recently. Oh, my God. He was on that video. You're Ooh. absolutely right. <laughs> yeah. Truth or death. It was so <sighs> weird, man. I didn't, but he didn't say anything. So maybe he didn't want to be there. Maybe no. it was like, maybe just doing a that favor for a That was like a, a, a career rejuvenator for him. That was just putting him back in the public eye. But still. It was kind of weird. The little Wayne just sitting there smoking weed and stuff. Too. I didn't see it, Dude, man. it was the most oddball. You didn't watch that? Dude, it was the most oddball All I know about it is what ever. you told me when we did the episode about it that the day. The Madonna episode. Man, we ripped her whole world apart. Yeah, my we did. God. My goodness, man. Her fucking dry ass grandma twat. Yeah, dude. But beautiful titties. <laughs> Madonna still has beautiful, beautiful titties. beautiful titties. I, I made sure. Because the that titties are too. ageless. Yeah. She has aged. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> well, sometimes if they get the, you know, the indents and stuff like that you the know concave I mean? yeah but she <laughs> look man i'm not taking anything if she didn't do all that work to her face she still would have been pretty hot madonna was good she would have been better like so look look at a picture of madonna as she is now and then look at roseanne who was never a beauty by the way yeah. never a looker but she's beautiful in her old age because she looks like a beautiful naturally aged old woman and then you have madonna who was beautiful her entire time and turn into some plastic weird fucking amalgam of what's supposed yeah. to be a human being yeah and is not it's bizarre um, what do you call it? Uh, was she in, um, a league of their own? Who? Madonna. Wasn't Madonna in a league of their own? I've she never was, seen it. right? See, I, I knew, I, I had to ask Our the, studio the, audience yeah, is and, telling she, us yes. I knew she'd know too. Yeah, dude, she was drop dead gorgeous in that movie. Really fun, really cool and stuff like that. That was not that long ago, man. Well, she was also, she was groundbreaking. She was kind of like a rebel and a hero in her own right, if you will. And Talented, she did like bring the gay yeah. community out and like she supported all them. But it's gotten to a point to where it's like it's no longer about like the uh, the authenticity of doing that from the heart. It's about like just gaining the notoriety from doing it. And that's where it kind of gets bastardized. And it's like you're shitting on your own legacy. You could have rode off into the sunset and been this wonderful, remarkable legend, if you will. And now you're just pissing on your own fucking grave. Yeah, even being a rebel is kind of corporate these days. You know what I mean? There's and no like rebel. The, yeah. Who's no, the rebel? No. Uh, I know I know the rebels, but these, the, you know. A rebel now is having a regular mentality and a normal plane exactly. point of view. Now Isn't you're a fucking weird? rebel. Yeah. yeah. To just to dare, to dare not think what they're telling you to. That's the rebel these <laughs> You got days. married as a natural woman and man and had yeah. kids in a family you crazy oh my god i can't I'll believe fire it. to your white picket <laughs> fence you yeah, that's to your crazy, white man. picket fence. yeah that's crazy man it's weird man. it's pretty wild so mario kart is it mario kart it's super mario brothers but they do do the little cars in it do they yeah i gotta yeah. see it so it's my, doing well and we're happy to see that my kids saw it she said she absolutely loved it and i trust her you know what i mean she's a kid so sure. she knows you know what i mean and she's she's not just any kid she's your kid yeah dude dude i'm telling you she's something man um <laughs> no, I'm saying. <laughs> god didn't that sound like that's where it was going to oh my god <laughs> I love her so much <laughs> oh my gosh man but uh, you know what going back to uh, Anthony Cumia can I bring this up oh man? yeah so new things have happened and yeah. we're kind of we're interested now we're invested for the moment exactly stuff's unfolding I guess uh, Godfrey told you, you know who Godfrey is right that you know the black comic dude yeah um he he told he's me a he, bum. he's a bum a fucking bum he's on with that Chad Zumach and they do this horrible show Chad Zumach oh my god man and it drives me nuts See, like, with Kevin this is Brennan where like too. for as much as I live my life according like I love that show growing up was a big part of my life and everything we've talked about before but he knows the culture even more intricately than I do I don't even know who Chad Zumach is well you you know how I really like went head first into this like we watch a lot of the same it's funny because like when we talk about videos that we watch we watch a lot of the same shit. Mm-hmm. you know how I went head first this is like where this all started was stuttering john i went down the stuttering john like thing then you i got sent me those videos yes dude then i got latched on to like shuli and the uncle rico show and they were making fun of john and then new characters were introduced and then everybody started jumping on board and one of them was chad zumok and then people kind of knew what chad zumok was he's just this he was just this latcher on at first he tried to back stutter john up and then he did this and now it's all this one big intertwined drama so he's, he's more or less like he's a coattail writer yes dude in the worst way dude i'm telling you right now if they weren't if Anthony Cumia and Kevin Brennan and, and Shuli and all those guys weren't like 
ragging on him, he would not have a career. I'm telling you. But he's fun, like, because he's such a nutbag. Mm-hmm. Like, he's fun to, like, follow along. Like, he, he did that fake. Uh, he got... He, I listen. People so say can, that can, he's for not even. Sorry, I know, I'm not, not even. Not even for everyone else. For me, yeah. It's can a, you? All right. So, what is Chad Zumach's relationship to all the players involved in this story? Chad Zumach is a stand-up comedian. He's a stand-up comic and that, has been for some time. Yes, and and has actually got a little bit of like fame for a while. Like he was he was going with um, uh, Mitch Hedberg for a minute. He was kind of opening Hedberg. for him, which is big. Which Mitch is, Hedberg, yes. best friends with the great Doug Stanhope. Yeah, the one oh, and only. I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Don't be mad at me. Uh, <laughs> I might be. No, it's uh, hey man, you know from uh, Jim Brewer. Jim Brewer. I'm sorry. I know I mix it two up. They're both kind of the hippies. I'm, I know that's like I know that Chad Zumach was. It's blasphemy, but he was opening up for Jim Brewer. Okay. Yes, okay. Sorry. All right. Cool. I know that's super blasphemy. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. So he Let was opening up for him. Lie. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I never want to make that mistake again. So, um, so he was opening up for him, and then kind of like you know got comedy friends. He hooked up with Godfrey, and they were doing a show. He was like wearing this captain's hat or whatever, and then he got uh, hooked up with Kevin Brennan. Kevin Brennan's a monster, dude. As much as Kevin Brennan rags on everything, he's a total monster. He really is funny. People just hate him because there's he's no so doubt about negative. that. Yeah. Yes. You know what I mean? Like he will never be a guy that he will never be like a. A, a company man. Like, no, he just he's just too outspoken. He hates his, people. His problem yeah. is he has genuine talent. He's a genuinely funny guy. He is witty. Yes. Even Anthony does not disparage that. Yes. Like that's a fact. His problem is himself. He's too entitled. He believes he deserves more than what he has earned, and he hates the people around him that have more than what he has, thinking that he's above them and should have it already. And when he does that, he becomes self destructive and he lashes out, and that kills his own career. If Kevin Brennan just beautiful played, summary, dude, beautiful that's summary. That's what he is, man. We, we all exactly see his talent. Even I see yeah. his talent, but yeah. I won't watch his show anywhere because I don't like the angle that he's taking. It's such a petty, cunty piece of shit angle, man. It's like, dude, why don't you like work on your craft and hone your skills and hone your chops and just put out good content? Stop trying to make your name off of all the people around you that gave you a shot that you burnt bridges on. It's disgusting. Yeah, it's almost like the bridges that he's burning is like elevating his career, but that only lasts, no exactly. It's, it only lasts for so long. It's a temporary bump. Yeah, it's a bump followed, followed by a steep. Decline decline into nothingness exactly dude you're never gonna be okay like that but so now he does uh misery loves company with uh bob levy chad zumach and kevin brennan mm-hmm. and they just rag on zumach the whole time it's the weirdest thing but what, he's like the whipping boy yes especially with brennan too so dude. all right so what is zumach like as a as a, a personality he's, i don't know anything about he's a guy. liar he's a weirdo he is uh, he like kind of wormy like really wormy always has an angle like um like the one of the big things was how he got mad, how he got into like issues with Anthony Cumia is they found out that he had uh, uh, got arrested for stealing credit cards and those guys wouldn't let up. And then he lashed out at Cumia for making jokes about the credit card. And dude, that group, imagine being around those guys. Mm hmm. I mean, they smell blood in the water. Murderers, yeah, man. That's, dude. But that's what it is. That's why the yeah. best of the best came out of that environment. Because exactly. you had to sink or fucking swim, man. Exactly. And they all took their beatings in their own right. Every single one of them. Jimmy took his beatings. Mm-hmm. Colin Quinn took his beatings. Nick DePaul took his beatings. Fucking all. Uh, Rich Voss. It doesn't yep. matter. Especially Bobby Voss, Kelly. Yes. And they all had their moments. And they all, like a hot potato, passed the fucking ball around each and every fucking time. And that was the greatness about it. And that's what kept them. That's not only what kept them sharp, but it's what kept them hungry humble and what kept them confident at the same time exactly it was just a beautiful exchange and 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 ask any one of them that didn't make it the worst thing that the best thing you could do is smile through the pain even if they're even if they're saying things that are like really well now you have to rise to the occasion how do i pass the ball into the next guy and like and you get your you get sharper and sharper and faster and wittier and that's the beauty of it that's the iron sharpens iron right that's what it was yeah Yeah. you know and and you're right dude rich voss he took hellacious beatings every time all the time but no one ever denied his fucking talent he was a funny Oh, dude, he man. was so good and you know what's funny is even Bonnie McFarlane back then was really mm-hmm. funny dude. man dude like what a different time that it that it is like like mm-hmm. Bonnie McFarlane going there do you remember she called Patrice the n-word yes do you remember oh, that oh yeah and oh, and, yeah. and they were all laughing their asses off including Patrice yes like it was such a different time man. but uh it was all allowed yeah so Chad Zumok dude total weirdo man like like just ridiculous 
Uh, he's still on with Kevin Brennan. I think it works though. I, there, there's something there, dude. You watch that show and you could, it's actually like super tolerable even with him on Sure. It. If they and just Bob disengage from too. the petty horseshit that they're trying to do and trying to make their names off of keeping this feud going, yeah. just make it on your own talent. Just yeah. be good. Yeah. You have talent, just be good on your own. Stop this petty horseshit, man. Yeah. And so now the new thing is, so obviously I told you he's buddies, he buddies up with uh, Godfrey, the black comedian. Godfrey goes online and tells Anthony Cumia, or on uh, yeah, on his show, he tells Anthony Cumia, "Don't show up to the cellar. If you so, show up to the cellar, you're gonna get your ass beat." Mm-hmm. And you know, Cumia is like, Cumia is nuts. You know, no, no matter what anybody says. So I guess he showed up that night and he was having a ball and he's drinking, he's having fun. Can I? Can I? Can I stop you? For yes, one? Can I make one point real quick? Yeah. Anthony Cumia showed up after getting threatened to get his ass whooped. All right, so. All of us that know Anthony Cumia, this is not like a tough guy. This isn't like a big built, like a fighter, like like a Joe Rogan type. He's not a bad motherfucker. The amount of courage and again, authenticity that it takes to do that shit in spite of being that dude, you have to have nothing but respect for that shit. He's not a guy where he's like, what are you going to do to me? And shows up and like beats their asses. This is a guy who put himself in the line of fire knowing that Godfrey probably could whoop his ass. And he still showed up, man. That's the fucking man right there. And he opens, like you said, he welcomes all conversation and all argument. And he will sit there and go toe-to-toe with you mentally and verbally, which is a greater skill set than the rest. And and not only that, not just Godfrey. Anthony Cumia has a target on his back wherever he goes. And this is New York. So anybody talking about, oh, he just, you know, he's tough with a gun or whatever. He's not bringing his gun out anywhere near that cellar, especially not places like that. So he goes in there and he does that. And, uh, it's just these guys, man. Oh my God. They make their name off of Kumia and then they, and then, and then they make another one bashing him. It's ridiculous, bro. But that's where it's at right now. It's a really big, like twisted world of everything that's going on, man. You know what I mean? It's bizarre though. Whole shows got created because of stuttering John and his weirdness. And now same things happening with like Chad Zuma. Like it's a really, really weird time. And like, you know, in that little world, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a trip though, man. But dude, I'm telling you, go down that rabbit hole, especially, Especially with Zoom and stuff, like like that. I'll get into it a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, yeah, I'm man. curious. That 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 black eye that he shows up with, and I guess people are people are smart, dude. People are really smart. They put it together. Like his hands were all covered in oil, and they they put like you know like they did some detective work. They surmised that. Zumok was stealing Cadillac because he's a thief. I mean, he is a criminal. They put it together that he was stealing Cadillac converters. He got caught, punched in the face. And then went back and like, maybe, I don't know if his plan was to sue him or something like that. Like maybe he was like building his case or something, mm-hmm. but he went online maybe just to garner up sympathy or empathy or, or try to start issues for Anthony. Or just to use it. Exactly. He's just using it. Yeah. And, and he went on there and dude, people picked it apart like nothing, dude. Mm-hmm. And the worst thing that could possibly happen is you got Kevin Brennan on there giving you the third degree because he's a really smart guy as it is so he's just picking him up he's like yeah he's like he's like i wouldn't know, say that he's a really it. smart guy he's not a, he's not necessarily a dumb person but he's too emotional he fires from the hip too much and he has too much self-interest to really be like have a piercing logic and see the truth for what it is dude i'm telling you he's though, more just a wit dude when he put him up when he put him in that in the hot seat and he was going out and checking the validity of his story and stuff like that and going back and like reversing back to he just picked this dude apart. It's funny because he's on his show. Like you'd think these guys are oh, on so his Brennan, side. Brennan, Brennan picked him apart broke and the called whole him out. thing down. And then everybody figured out, yeah, man, it's a really it's just insane, dude. It's nuts, man. But that's what I'm saying. It's like I want to like Kevin Brennan, but he's such a dick. It's weird, you know? It's just weird like seeing all these like, how do I say this? Um, like subcultures of O and A like kind of feeding off the old ONA legend and Anthony Cumia who still exists, including even Opie, yes. who is one of the all-time greats. You know what I'm saying? Like this happened and Opie puts out videos and kind of like piles on and he's trying to get clout from it. Everyone's trying to get clout from Anthony Cumia. It's bizarre, man. Opie. It's bizarre. It's fucking strange to me to watch it happen. Watching these people like, try to cannibalize themselves for an audience that is already set in stone and already has their ways and has their people have made their choices, have made their sides, and have made their bones. It's weird to watch that happen. And you're going to try to destroy this great legend who's still in the game, still putting out quality content, still speaking his mind, authentic till the end, created his own network so he could speak the truth and do what he does, never bent the fucking knee, did the entire thing from zero to 60 the entire fucking way. Like, Stop trying to fucking eat him to, to, to fucking to survive. Stop. You, you know, it's funny, too, is like even with that point, 
Opie, it's the weirdest thing. He'll post a video or a story about Anthony, or he'll put his two cents about something that happened with Anthony, mm -hmm. and then fo ends the video with, I don't want anything to do with it. Leave me alone on every video, man. It's so weird. The it's most, so weird. The most bizarre and shameful part is like, if Opie actually sat down and had a conversation with Anthony Cumia, they could probably make amends. They still, for all their hatred towards each other, they still have love for each other. That much is obvious. And somehow, Opie is trying to like still get around and create his own name outside of it. Dude, Opie, you guys are inextricably linked until the day you yeah. fucking die. No and matter that is what. that. Anthony is a remarkable talent and an amazing mouthpiece and a great entertainer. He's always going to find an audience. He's always going to find listeners. People are always going to find him interesting. You are a highly skilled radio host, the straight man in the room. You have ability. You have value. You have fucking all that. Stop trying to compete with the comic side of things. Just stop doing it. You're great. Even Anthony will give you your accolades if you just stop trying to fucking, like, cannibalize him, dude. That's yeah. what it is. Just stop. Yeah. Same thing with Kevin Brennan, too. Like, Anthony recognizes the talent in all of you, yet you all attack him. He sees Kevin Brennan as funny. He knows that Opie's value was his value in the X, Y, and Z capacity. Jimmy Norton, same thing. Jimmy, Even Jimmy Norton talks about how Opie was a smart guy, and he had his value. No one took that away from him. Even Patrice, if you go back and watch the old clips, he talks to Opie directly. He's like, I know you need a friend. And he tries to befriend him and tries to like yeah. get him out of his shell. And he saw exactly what was going on. And Opie buried himself. And all these people buried themselves. And the more you attack this great man that is Anthony Cumia, the more you spit on your own fucking face. Yeah. Stop doing it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what he did say, though? You know what Opie said about Jimmy? And it kind of... I don't know, man. Like it kind of sparked something with me because he is right. I always said he's that. not entirely wrong. Oh no, no, he, he has the way his he points. has handled things, yeah. the way he's, he's, he's gone about things. And he's too, but he's yeah, not inherently he's wrong about his observations yeah. and things like this. It's just he filters it through his petty nature, and then it comes out wrong. Exactly what he said about Jimmy on this particular instance with the whole bird like situation. He's like. He's like, and let me guess. He goes, and I know exactly where Jimmy stands. It's like, I know on the right fence. where, on the fence with his fucking tank, with both legs hanging over right on the fence. And I always said, I wish Jimmy would back Anthony up just a little bit more. Cause I'm telling you, if anything happened mm -hmm. with Jimmy, I know Ant would back him up. You know what I mean? But here's the bottom line of but all this is that, shit is that none me. of these guys are perfect mm -hmm. and all of them have flaws. Mm -hmm. And the difference between Jimmy and Opie and Anthony and X, Y and Kevin Brennan is that, Anthony, for all of his flaws and for all of his whatever the fuck you want to call it, his misdeeds, if you will, he takes responsibility for all of it and he's willing to openly discuss every single piece of it. What he doesn't like is this fucking hurling of insults and this fucking blasphemy against him, more or less, yeah. and ostracizing him. And he doesn't get his dues and he doesn't get his voice. And we all know that out of all these guys, well, number one, Anthony. Anthony was the fucking man and Jimmy was like right there with him. Jimmy and Anthony, he made that was the it. show. Yeah. Yeah. Did you? It, was, it is what it is, man. Yeah, it became an entirely different. But you know, it, it's not lost on Anthony that he has his whole career and every all everything, his whole empire. It's not lost on that man that it became. It came from Opie's giving him an opportunity. Of course, he and he letting him into the business. Time. And yeah. also, Opie's the one that like he taught him the ropes as far as the radio game goes, like how to negotiate contracts and how to not be like a whipping boy and like tell him to go fuck themselves. We can get more money than this. And Anthony was scared the entire time. It's not lost on that man. I promise you, it's not. He's just doing his thing now. Somebody put it that the show kind of outgrew Opie for, for what it was because when it became this... It didn't, though. It was this steamroller, though, where Opie was still trying to do... Like like they said with the with the contract negotiations, he said that he would wait till the last day and that morning of and it would drive everybody nuts and stuff like that. There was always... He was just always doing something weird. And I think that upset everybody. And of course, dude, how you're, when you're involved with that, when, when, when you got to sit across from this guy and you know he's pulling these shenanigans left and right it starts to like you know it starts to become a grind and, and bother people well, that's sure. why they were fighting amongst themselves for so many years but again like I mean? back on a human level if you will all those tactics that Opie employed is what got them to where they were yeah. and nobody is perfect so if you yeah. live your your life a certain way and you have a certain like skill set that you have used to get to a certain point you're going to kind of not get Refer delusional but not it. not know when it's time to change direction and change tactics or just make peace for with what you have and accept that Yeah. so it was just again man it's like a this is going to be stupid, but I'm going to take it to Red Dead Redemption 2. Yeah. You were telling me about this. You know that the leader of the gang, for those of you that played the game, which is most of the machine. Dutch, baby, Dutch. Yeah, Dutch. Yeah. So he's a great leader who cared about his people, but over the life of the game, he kind of gets misguided and makes mm. wrong decisions and fucks things up, but he was still the same guy that made the right decisions and got him to the place that they were at, right? Yeah. So it's the same thing with Opie. He just didn't realize, he didn't know how to like, 
all right, so so they kind of like grew fat on Opie and they gained these skills and this like this background knowledge and these like these these abilities of understanding radio and how to navigate the landscape, if you will. They became skilled in their own right. And Opie never recognized that he actually like weaned them to a point to where they were full grown adults too, and then take their advice and exchange with them instead of trying to run the entire thing. And he thought that that made him less and that made him spiteful and angry and upset. And so he lashed out. Now he's trying to highlight people's uh, like their, their lower qualities of the things that they did wrong, like like Jimmy Norton and things like that. Yeah. How he's like, he's a worm and blah, 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 this, that, yeah. and the other thing. And the character. But he's, he's just trying to about, lift yeah. himself back up to where he was. But he doesn't understand that they never put him down. He put himself down. And that's the weird behavior that you're seeing. It's bizarre, man. You know, it's funny. It's like. And and only somebody who's been in that situation can really like you know tell you how they actually feel. I don't know how Opie feels. I I couldn't say like well I would have did it like this. I guess you don't know. You know what I mean? Like like who knows what was going on in his head? Or maybe mm-hmm. he did think and and you know what he probably was doing it because he thought it was for the greater good of everybody. You know what I mean? And he's well, also like, used to being that guy and playing that yeah. role. That's what he did for twenty some odd years. Howard Stern was still dude. Howard Stern I, his show's still going, but every time it's contract season. Howard Stern would go, I'm done. This is it. This is all. I'm, I'm done. He would still do that, dude. Right now, he's still doing that after That's all something these that years. I loved about the ONA show is that they would expose the radio tricks. Oh, yeah, the The, dude. the fake retirement, yeah. all that shit. Like, like those oh, okay. magicians that were going on. Or, or the, uh, the fake suspension. Yes. Yeah. Oh, let me guess. We're getting suspended for a few days, and the executives come in and be like, it's just for show, like <laughs> all that bullshit. But yeah. Interesting stuff, man. They hated that fake stuff, and that was what was so wonderful yeah. about it, man. Yeah. But those guys, at the end of the day, I would love to see all of them get together again and kind of like reunite and just say fuck it to everything else in between and give Anthony Cumia his fucking dues. The man's a legend. He's a great. Love him, hate him, agree with everything he's done, don't agree with everything he's ever done, blah, blah, blah. But he was a pioneer, and he's a great talent and a sharp mind, and he's a special guy. You can never doubt what he was or what he still is. He still is, yeah, man. He yeah. still got it. I remember, what was it, like five years ago, I was telling, I was telling Jenny about about this like five years ago joe rogan had him on the podcast and joe rogan was a monster in the industry at this he was already the most successful and famous guy on the planet more famous than anthony at the time where he had him on the podcast go back and look that episode up anthony kumi on the joe rogan podcast and read the comments everyone in the comments who didn't even know who anthony was was like this guy's amazing i can listen to this guy talk all day what a fucking what a remarkable talent what a, what a nice like like down-to-earth guy he's just such a normal dude he, his, his takes are interesting and fascinating he's hilarious he's fast and just praise and praise and praise and praise if you take away all the bad press and all that and you just see the talent for what he is yeah. it's in those comments man it's in the comments section yeah it's the media that took him down a pay you know what i mean yeah. no yeah you know um are we moving on? Or it's up to you. Oh, okay, I was gonna tell you. You heard about? I was gonna tell you about the Dalai Lama. Oh, <laughs> Dude, all right, all right, yeah. all right, all right. So, all right, this is fucked up. Dude, so, this is really fucked set up. it up, man. Okay. He just told me about this right before we rolled the camera. No. So I, I know only the base. I just know what he did. I don't know how it led up to it. So okay, anyway. so here's how it goes. Some little boy was excited Ew. to meet the Dalai Lama, like anybody should. I mean, if a Catholic meets a Pope, you know, you're kind of like, oh, it's him, you know. So this little boy goes up to the Dalai Lama, and he's, you know, just kind of giving him gratitude, let him know it's such an honor to meet him and stuff like that. The Dalai Lama looks this little boy dead in the face and goes. Suck my tongue. What is going on? Are you dude? serious? Though? Dude, like, I didn't see the clip. You know how we always say, like, remember on Little Nicky when at the very end they were like making a hell on earth and everybody was acting bad and you started noticing like life getting worse and worse and everybody's hitting people and running around and setting stuff on fire and stuff like that. Dude, I swear to God, that's happening. Right sounds now. like the you last three it, years. The Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, dude. Wait, wait. So he says, he says, suck. How old was the kid? Uh, I'm not sure. No, if I'm not trying a, to justify it. I'm no, just, no, no, I no, just no, want no. to understand the setting. Oh, no, I was going for a joke anyway. I'm not <laughs> sure if he's of age, but I'd say about nine. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. he says, suck my tongue. And he then what suck. happens? Where's, does the, the kid do it? The little boy sucks his tongue. Yeah. Where's the parents? Um, Probably outraged in the audience or something like that. But, but dude, it's one of those things where it's But then like, what happened after the kid sucks his tongue? Does he like teach some lesson about why that's righteous or some shit? Or did it just happen no, in I, a bizarre fashion and then... I think Dwindle it's just, away. I think it's just some pervert move. You know what I mean? Like, what a weird like what request, the fuck? though, right? Yeah, I mean that, that's what he's under fire for right now. Under you know? fire. Yeah. Suck my tongue. Suck my tongue. That reminds me of Face Off. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. that shit? Yeah. Um. And he's uh, like, he's Pastor like, Troy. <laughs> I could eat I could eat a peach for days. Yeah. And then they use that as like the little voice for going, I could eat a peach for days. For hours. Peach. God, that movie, man. I want to see that Renfeld. 
That looks amazing, by yeah. the way. That looks like a fun one. Nicholas Cage is back. You We're taking a hard a, left yeah. turn right now. Oh, I know, <laughs> dude. I'm sorry. I'm so no, it's fine. Up right now, yeah. But he, um, uh, Nicholas Cage is back, dude. He's having like a good run, and I'm glad. You know what? I'm happy to see that shit. So, yeah. so for the longest time, we all know that Nicholas Cage was just churning out just garbage after garbage, B film, C film, D film, just absolute nonsense. And with the career he had, it made no sense. And for the longest time, I was confused. I used to talk shit, and you were the one that actually mm-hmm. told me that he had like tax issues and he owed a bunch of money. Dude, he was right? in so much debt. This fool so, was spending so much money before he got it, dude. Oh so he was God. just taking like any opportunity that he could to make a buck to pay back his debts and get, kind of come out from underneath it. And now he's like back in a spectacular way. And I'm happy to see him have like his twilight years and kind of bring his image back and like who he really is back and see him do great films and interesting art and things like that. Because he really, that's another guy that deserves it, man. He worked his ass off his whole life. He's a fucking great one. Love him, hate him. He's a great one. Dude, I've been watching that guy since the 90s and 80s and everything else and he's always been good dude like valley girl and stuff like that yeah dude i'm telling you right now in the 80s that nicholas cage the reason why he was like uh like a heartthrob right like they consider him like a teenager i didn't kid. know that dude this fool is that was true i didn't so know that in shape dude, he shredded like well a he was monster. in sh- i never looked at him like like a george clooney-esque type no dude not well you know how i mean I mean, Michael C. Hall was a heartthrob in the 80s. It was like, it was... Didn't know the, that either. The, the, the bar was a little lower, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, you can't help it. All you, you needed know? was a good mustache. Well, yeah, and then in the 90s, all you needed was a good bowl cut. I mean, look at Jonathan Taylor Thomas and that other, you know what I mean? It was just a different time. Now it's like heart teenage heartthrobs are fucking just tattoo faced and you know what I mean it's weird you know Post Malone yeah but um yeah man I, I Nicholas Cage has been doing so much and you're right dude he did what he had to do and come I back. didn't know I didn't know but he's a great one yeah man. he's a guy I root for I, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like where you know just like him partying did not know too he was much a or something yeah yeah dude I'm telling you dude and he was insane shape too it was nuts man. It was well he was in that, that generation's good shape yeah so here's a fun fact like because of like how far we've come with like sports science and you know like nutrition and training and like different things like this you know all the different like keto and blah 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 and steroids and so on so but if you look at uh go back and watch the fast and the furious one i remember when that movie came out i was a kid and we watched that movie and vin diesel was on screen in his fucking tank top whatever i remember thinking that that guy was like the incredible fucking hulk just a Mm. monster dude i saw that shit on tv like a a few months back or whatever i'm looking at him i'm like I'm bigger than this motherfucker. And he's like a I'm normal big, guy with that dude, black cock. I'm bigger shirt. and in better shape than he was then. And I'm like, holy shit. And now he's like a fucking animal if you like watch this stuff now. But like back then, we considered that the pinnacle of like the human physique, if you will. It was pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, talk about like them like having to meet that certain standard of like in shape. And it's nuts now. Man. Look at Hugh Jackman as like Wolverine or whatever. Or like uh, what's his face that plays Thor? Chris Hemsworth. No, you're right. And it's the, not even close. No, it's dude, it's the, absurd. The first Wolverine was like. He know, was like, normal. Yeah, he was He was Jack for a normal guy. human being. Yeah. <laughs> now it's like, oh my God. Yeah, it's absurd. You know? But you're right. Like they've come so far with that. Yeah. You know, and these guys can buy these insane steroids and, 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 and the science behind it, it's like. So All of it, the nutrition now. and the yeah. training regiments and everything like that, it's fucking absurd. And you go back and you look at Mike Katz left in buckets of cement and shit like that, you know? Like when that all like kicked off, it was like, oh And my like God, before Vin Diesel and his tank top and Fast and the Furious, like we'll say like a couple of generations before that, you were a tough guy if you just had like any muscle tone and like wore a wife beater. Even if you had like a gut, if you had like some semblance of arms, you're like, that guy's jacked. Well, if you and if you had a gut, you would just wear your pants real That's high, all it was. And that was it, dude. And that you were good from there, you know? Yeah, oh, those are good times. Um, what do you call it? Oh my god, I forgot what I was gonna say, but I was racing. Um no, dead air is good. Yeah. No, no, I know. I'm sitting good. I'm going, man, we just got viewers and now I'm watching this. Take um, a nap. I know. What the, all right, you know what? I'm going to jump off of it anyway. It was something else about those guys that used to work out and stuff. Oh, I didn't know. I have it. I actually have it. Okay. You know what always shit me out? Is um, like Mr. Olympia. Like, I don't know. Like people, how they, that fan base that goes. I also have to sh- shit. Sorry. Like my mind's all over the place. But I don't know how that fan base goes out there. Like they just go out there and they look at like huge guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Isn't that nuts? It's weird. Okay. Now I'm good. Yeah. Like, okay. Okay. I, I got all <laughs> Next time, do in. it into the mic. I know. 
Okay. No, but it's like you go out there and you're just staring at like huge guys. Jack dudes. And I don't know. It's like, I mean, like, I guess I could appreciate all the hard work they put into and stuff like that. Oh, there's no doubt. But you know how you said that. It's bizarre. Like weird. a guy that knows how to wrestle yeah. is going to be like, oh my God. When like somebody's like in UFC doing some wrestling move and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I guess, I mean, you have to like lift to like really appreciate some dude with an arm like that. Like, I don't know. Like I, I look at that dude that's on there. I'm like, I don't, he was born with a huge arm. I'm, like, I'm going to say do? yes and no. For me. Not for like people that are in like bodybuilder culture. I'm sure it's a whole different like mentality and ball game. But for me, what I'm impressed by, I was talking about Arnold Schwarzenegger and why he's the best bodybuilder. Yes. It's not that he was just this insanely muscled guy and like he just had like this crazy build, if you will. It's how symmetrical and how perfect and how even every muscle on his body was. It was in the right place. It was sculpted like it was out of stone. He was an artist in that fashion. Like Ronnie Coleman is way more jacked. Like he has yeah. muscles upon muscles upon muscles and he's huge and more than Arnold Schwarzenegger. When you look at Arnold Schwarzenegger, like the the perfection of how he built his body consciously is what blows my fucking mind. Dude, that shit is crazy. And we're talking about a 40-year gap between yeah, man. those two. He's and the uh, best yeah. that ever did it by a fucking country mile. Yeah, it's that's insane. a trip. That's a trip. But I mean, like, all right, I could look at a picture or even the documentary, you know, because it's interesting and stuff like that. But I don't, I don't, I couldn't see myself in the audience walking up and like watching some guy walk over and like hit me with the back, woo, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And me being like, He's all oiled up yeah, and shit. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I I just kind of find it silly. I You're just, just like, eh, just yeah. in the audience. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be it? Like, I, you know, I don't know. I actually wonder who that audience is. Like, who do they sell tickets to? Well, when they have the- Are con- they like bodybuilders themselves? Is it like that? Dude, a lot of them are in really good right, shape. So like, when that convention comes out here, there's a bunch of in-shape people, and for, some of them yes. just have passes and, and shit. And like, for instance, like- uh, when I, when I was coming up, I talked about this before, I used to be a skateboarder, and skateboarding became super popular in my generation. Right before me, it was Rodney Moen, like Lords of Dogtown, like, you know, fish fishtail skateboards in swimming pools and doing a lot of hand tricks. And then my generation was like Tony Hawk, fucking Chad Muska, Kareem Campbell, crazy flip tricks, street skaters, grinding on rails, all the crazy shit you see now. And that's when it became hyper popular. But when you would go to the X Games or go to any event skateboarding, it was all people like me that did it, that were in the culture, that loved it. It wasn't just random people that just observed and appreciated it. So I would imagine that bodybuilding is a similar type. Yeah, like, like that's fan base what the audience well. is made People that it, do right? it. Like if, if, um, if there was a pool tournament here in Vegas, if I go and buy tickets to that pool tournament, I guarantee you every single person sitting in that knows audience how to play. It's either a pool player or loves pool or is it like an aspiring pool player. They're all in that field. Whereas like boxing has like degrees of fans. You have casual fans that like to see people get their asses whooped. Mm. You have people that just like action. You have people that understand boxing a bit. Then you have real people that box. Then you have actual boxers that watch it. So there's like layer upon layer upon layer of fan base, if that makes any sense. But bodybuilding, it has to be just the people that are in that environment. Yeah. There can't be a casual bodybuilding fan that, no that, that, right there can't be no there can't you can't be. just be like mm, i'm gonna go check these guys there's out. no fucking yeah. way exactly no, god no man. so that's an interesting thing yeah you know what's a trip though man is like all right so look how much skateboarding's evolved right? like you said like it's with the wild and stuff like that and they were wearing those tiny little boards and going over the light and yeah stuff man like that you know what i mean like where did, does it ever evolve again like I it is evolving uh, dude I would like say, the 900 was such a big deal that would that Hawk, broke but ground like everyone can do it. you could be six years old and do that shit but I was watching a skateboard video. I was actually drinking by myself, just watching random shit. This is like a few weeks ago. It was mm. recently. And I watched a skateboard video. I forgot the names of the guys that were in it or whatever. And the shit that they're doing now it's is insane. fucking unthinkably mind-blowing. It's absurd. Yeah. Also, like, um, it's interesting to see like that, that rapid evolution in extreme sports. Because you see that in skateboarding. You've seen that in BMX and motocross. And here's a weird one. Go watch uh, parkour. has only been around for, I would say, about 15 years, maybe 20 years to where it's like more mainstream that people know what it is and it's developed. I used to love parkour when it first came out. Go back and watch like 15 years ago parkour and then watch just any clip from today. Dude, Are it, they like it, it's astonishing. It's field? astonishing. Yeah. I can't yeah. fucking believe the shit that they're able to do. So it's, it's strange. It's strange how fast that we can evolve in that way. I didn't skate, but I knew a lot of skateboarders. But when I was a kid, I remember sitting in houses and everybody was smoking weed and either one of two videos were on. It was either a skate video mm-hmm. or the Up and Smoke tour. Remember what Dr. The Dre? Up and Smoke yeah, tour, and they yes. Had the, 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 you remember that? And like Dub C did the Sea Walk. Oh and my Eminem God. took the ICP and yes. they, with the with the blow up dolls and stuff like that. Those two videos, I just remember being on everywhere around like 99 to like 2003. Mm-hmm. It was just everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, man. That weird, like just skate videos or that. What were you, know? you into? Like, what was your thing growing up? Did you have some kind of sport or some, some kind of passion project? Being real, I was just, like, by the time I hit eighth grade, I was a stoner. 
and okay. and but that tied in with skaters and but BMX did you like practice huge. some kind of whatever discipline or whatever the fuck it is where you escape or a rollerblader did you roller skate and work at Anything Sonic Burger? Physical? Like, no, <laughs> I, I was I was the funny guy in the group. So so comedy. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I know this sounds kind of silly, but like honing my way to like, I smell like shit. So this fly came up to me. Uh, <laughs> honing my skill to be able to like talk shit to on people. The floor. I always had, I, and I know there's plenty of ways to like shit on the floor, get swifty. <laughs> but um, but yeah, like just learning how to like talk and make Timing. everybody laugh and shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. And that I'm makes telling sense you, it, it, there's a reason why I could do it now so well. It's you know a skill I mean? set, exactly. I mean, it's not the most you know like you, usable, but yeah. Yes, it is. Look, if I if I did, if it's ever more usable, it's right now at this moment time. But let me ask you this. Was there ever a point in time where you're like, I'm going to pick up the microphone and get on stage and I want to try to make it as a stand? Did you have some type of pursuit yes. outside of just being cool in your circles and being like likable? Yes. Okay. So people kept telling me and then my buddy that I grew up with, Cameron Ramirez, told me he wants me to do five minutes. Like write five minutes, write five minutes, write five minutes. Well, fuck what people told you. What was in your head? No, no, no. But but that's that was because I always wanted to do it. I always thought I could get up there and I could do that. Mm. And then th- this was like the first time that there was an opportunity. He was going to take me downtown and we were going to do the shows and stuff like that. And then He was going to give you a spot? Yes. And then he got invited to do the comedy store in LA, which is like huge. Which of, is like, yes. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean? Those of you that know. Yes. Okay. Um, so. Real Real quick, uh, how old were you? This was a couple of years ago. Are you talking oh. about growing up? No, I'm just I'm just wondering. Oh, yeah. This is fairly recent. Yes, this is fairly recent. Okay, right. okay. So he offered me this, and um, uh, I made up every excuse I could not to go. And then he wound up going by himself on the way back from LA. He his car breaks down. He walks in the travel lane, gets hit, gets killed. Right. So that was like. You I, killed him. I, I think so. It's fucked if up. If you were there, he I'm, wouldn't have been in that well, exact you, spot. Okay, now I know that's... You fucking no, killed him. And I know that's fucked up, but you know how I told you that Did you go to the funeral? Yeah. You know how I told you... <laughs> everybody was like, get out, get out. No, but you know how I told you that sometimes in life, if you don't follow like destiny, like destiny's like, do it, do it, do it. Mm-hmm. Like shit goes bad. Yes. That was one of those things where I'm like, holy shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, what if I was in the car and we would have went this now, way? Now, let me ask you this Not question. Guilt, but you know. when you heard that that had happened, did you, did you go, oh my God, I should have went? Or did you go, I'm glad I didn't go because I would have been killed too. Uh, well, did you rationalize yourself away from it? First of all, that fool was nuts and I wouldn't have been walking in the travel lane. <laughs> Not even being a dick. He was crazy. That fool was out of his mind. Yeah, anyone who gets on stage is crazy. Yeah, exactly. Um, I would have definitely been on like the other side or like, you know, fucking called an Uber and went on the other side. I would not have been walking down the freeway and the fucking traveling. Forget it. You know what I mean? <laughs> so no, I don't think that would have happened. But um, uh, but I did notice it's like, you know, what else? You know, what if we would have went something different? We would have stopped on the way back. We would have took my car. Yes. Anything. So I so I was thinking of that. It's not, it's not a guilt feeling. I'd I, Listen, People die every day. Shit happens. I, I, it's not a guilt thing. P- people make out their own decisions, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? But it is one of those things where it's like, you know, maybe I would have went out there and something good would have happened. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So it, it, it was like Did that. Did it haunt you so. in any type of way? Yeah. Not, not guilt-wise, like uh, I had my opportunity or like... Because I could have been at the comedy store and what if something... And I would have met somebody. Like, listen, I think this is happening right now for us. I think this is happening is. right now. So who knows? Maybe it was just timing or whatever. But I always told you, man, it's like... I feel like life was telling me to do something and I wouldn't do it. Mm-hmm. And I'd feel like shit that week. I'd get sick. Something bad would have my fucking car would break down. Something mm-hmm. stupid. And I feel like there was like plenty of those times like booing ass. This is the first time that I'm like in it and mm-hmm. I'm and I'm going. I'm losing weight. I'm like doing this. Like I feel I I feel like invested in this yes. and I want to follow through. And connected to it and everything. Yeah. And, and, and you're putting the real effort. You're not just, shying away from exactly, it. Exactly. Which is by the way, guys, feeling. this yes. is an interesting thing. Like since again, like we're just normal motherfuckers. Like we've only been doing this for a couple of months. Our whole lives are in restaurants and regular jobs. Yes. And we know normal people. This is what we know. So since we've been doing this, and now that like our fr- our own personal, think about your life and your friends around you and all that shit. And now you have this show. So we have this show. Here it is. We're on the camera. We have the equipment. We do it every day. I have had countless people come up to me and tell me they want to be on this show, and I'm gonna offer them the opportunity. But on more than one occasion, I offer to put them on, and when the day comes, they find some weird excuse to get away from it or to not be on the show or, you know, like, oh, I wasn't camera ready or I had this going on or I wasn't in that right headspace. And we're starting to realize that it's just fear-based. People are just afraid to put themselves out there. And at some point in time, you just got to do that shit. You got to grab your nuts and jump in the fucking water. Hi, Alicia. You're right, bro. That's right. That's what's up. <laughs> you want to jump on? <laughs> you want to jump on? <laughs> one of many. Let's go. Oh shit. All right. So, all right. 
My homegirl, Alicia, who lives with me, she's one of the ones that wants to be on the show. She's about to put her money where her mouth is. You might see her in 10 minutes' time. I'm holding you accountable. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hell yeah, man. This is going to be interesting. And okay. not only that, that's good because we just filled up another time slot because I don't have anything else. <laughs> it's wonderful. You don't have any more show prep? Um, Are we out of show prep? Show prep. Well, wait a minute. We could talk about Bud Light and about how they're dying. Oh, my God. Let's yeah. do that for a couple of seconds here. So, <laughs> I think this was the biggest like company bomb mm -hmm. in a long time in a yeah. very long time. But this is a good one because it's on such a public scale and yeah. everyone is talking about it. It's making the point that Billy and I have made countless times on the show where it's like, dude, you don't have to like yell and scream and belabor the point. Let people vote with their fucking wallets. It's going to come to fruition on its own without it being yelled and screamed about and just over tagged and all that bullshit, if you will. So everyone knows that Dylan, or Dylan, Dylan Mulvaney, Mulvaney, Dylan Mulvaney, wherever the fuck that trans dude is, yeah. uh, he was endorsed by Bud Light and he was on the trans cans and all that shit. The and trans cans. That's what I call it. The trans cans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So their stock has been plummeting and their sales have been abolished. Like, like liquor stores aren't even buying Bud Light to sell in their stores because no one will fucking buy it. And it's funny because like people are going to talk about this like we're doing right now, but in a worse way, they're going to talk about it and highlight the issue. And, oh, it's because of this. And then Ben Shapiro is going to come out and go, it's because of that and tied to political issues and agendas and social fucking bullshit. And everyone's going to go in circles with it. Look, the bottom line is, is that the market doesn't want it. Produce what the fuck the market wants. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all. It doesn't have to be about politics and tied into this and hate. And is it trans and is it not trans? And is it right? Is it is gay wrong? Blah, blah, yada, yada, yada. Look, it didn't fucking work. Nobody wants it. Produce what people fucking want. And that is that. It's That's it. If it doesn't have to be a moral quandary. Just, yeah, if they're just, if they're buying your shit, then, Dude. you know, I mean, play ball. Like, yes. that's what it is. But here's something I will say, like, on, like, whatever social issues level, if you will, which is interesting, is that the whole reason why that that woman that took over that that job we were talking about like uh, the executives. Oh yeah. Her job was to be like more inclusive and like tap into these markets that people aren't tapping into and kind of market to those demographics and blah blah yada 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 this and that. But but she did it and it doesn't fucking work. So now here's here's my thing is that your whole pitch like your whole like uh, this is why we marketed this way was to be inclusive. So if it was me, say I was rich right now and I owned fucking Anheuser Busch or a beer company, wherever it was. My marketing campaign wouldn't be to trans people. It wouldn't be to hillbillies. It wouldn't be to fucking black people, white people. It would be everyone drinks my beer because my beer is good for fucking everyone. And that is what true inclusivity is. When you pinpoint one demographic and then focus it into that one demographic, you're isolating all the rest of the people around you. So you're not being inclusive. It's, it's literally the exact logical opposite of inclusivity. And what you're seeing now is that you're seeing... That when they when they chose this trans activist to be on the can, they spit in the face of all the people that were already their customers and their consumers that made the brand and that spent all the money building up to where they're at now. And you isolated, not you didn't include them, you isolated them by only including this one. And that's what's fucking stupid. And that's why if you look at all the cans before whatever, John, Dylan Mulvaney, where the, fuck, the trans fucking guy on the, on the fucking can, it just said Bud Light. That's how you include everyone. Yeah. You just call it Bud Light. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? You know what? So they let this be an interesting... So It's not because we're hateful. It's not because we hate trans. It's not because it's anti-gay. It's not because of any of that bullshit. It's because you excluded a massive portion of the population by only focusing on one piece. Yeah. That's it. You discluded. You didn't include. You discluded. That's what you fucking did. And that's the fucking recompense. You know what they said that like a, a big issue is? Is when like... Oh, I can't wait to hear the, this. The second day, like after like the initially took off they said that people you know the bars would fill up right around six seven o'clock mm -hmm. and people were coming up and going let me get a bud light and everybody like in like tennessee was like oh you need to talk it all shit, just <laughs> shit. and they said that's when why the, don't you just suck a yeah, dick well that's what they were saying dude. Okay. so so then and then and then it went from that to like them putting in a glass to people noticing that they were putting it in a glass and still making fun of them so then to not present that. the can you know what i would have did if i was in that chick's position Here's what my here's my commercial. It would have been like four guys all like cheersing in their car, mm -hmm. and then like pulling on to like the wrong way on a freeway, and like you just see like the cherries like going down, mm -hmm. and then just Bud Light. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what? like I would leave people just floored. Like like they'd be like they'd be. I want people when they see my commercial, they go. Uh -huh. 
did they just, you know what I mean? Like, I want them to look around the room and go, did they just, were they going like, you know what I mean? Like, I want nothing but confusion by the end of it. You know what's kind of funny to me, though, is that like. <laughs> <laughs> just going on the wrong way. And I want it obvious where it just says wrong way. And like, you know how, like, when the lights shine on, it's like. <laughs> like, I want it, like, really bright. And then just going down. I think that'd be the funniest commercial on the fucking planet, dude. Dude, you should get a CEO salary I right fucking so, now. Dude. I guarantee you. I guarantee you. This, I'd this sell more funny. beer than Dylan fucking Mulvaney. I was going to say, this is funny, but it would work. It's it would actually work. brilliant. It would no doubt work. People know that. Okay, listen. People know that that alcohol causes a car crash and shit like that. Okay, Nobody's curious about if that there's the two are linked, okay? I fucking assure you that 100% people will go, it would be so morbid and it would be so sick, but it would be so real that they would buy my beer. And they're not even a question. Not even a question. Billy for president. They all be shaking my hands and say, Kid Rock walking over, high fiving me and stuff. Right? Billy G twenty twenty four. Fuck Trump. See, I should. I, I tell you, I should have got a degree. Oh my no god, big deal. marketing baby. I think it's funny that like all these like high level entrepreneurs and rich people that have the money to like start companies and corporations right now are missing this obvious marketing opportunity. You could all be rich so easy, and all you have to do, you don't have to go against the grain of like counter counter like uh, whatever promoting the like, not trans blah blah. You don't have to go with the grain. If you go right in the fucking middle, mm -hmm. right? If you you could if you start a liquor company right now and you just go right in the middle and just fucking promote to everyone with no agenda and no social issue, people will flood to that fucking brand to support that. And there's such an easy way to make money. If if I was a filmographer or whatever, I was like an up and coming director, some kind of movie, whatever the fuck it is, some movie guy that has a couple of bucks in his pocket. I would start a production company where I just make good entertaining movies because no one's doing that anymore. And you're going to tap into this, this desperate part of the market that is not being heard or listened to at all. And all those are going to flood to your company. And what's going to happen is when your company is just booming and exploding and just just taking all this fucking money from other companies' pockets, they're all going to have to fall so we can compete with you. And you could set a whole new social standard. You could change the entire climate of the entire social world just by doing that. And again, you don't even have to fire a fucking shot. You don't have no. to say a goddamn word. You don't have to say they're wrong or they're right or it's this or I support that or the other thing. You just make it. You make it for everybody and you let everybody come. And that's all you have to do. It's yeah. so simple. You're leaving money on the table. Give me fucking money. Make me rich right now. I promise you I can get this shit done. I'll make us a trillion dollars and I'll give it back to all you guys. I'll keep a million for myself. How's that sound? Yeah. Subscribe. Yeah. Like and subscribe. You don't need this line in the sand. <laughs> it's retarded. Man, right, dude, it's dude. such a waste. Everybody picks this big side of the war. And the <sighs> truth of the matter is, it's, so it's so funny though. It's it's just all adults doing everything they can to piss each other off. And it's so it's silly. It's petty man. and grimy yes. and fucking ridiculous. And, and believe me, man, I don't care, dude. I do, I, and, and, I, and I promise you, the other side does the same thing, dude. Everybody they all do the same to thing. Piss themselves off. Dude. But they're all embarrassing at this point in yes. time. I always mention, I hate to do it all, but I'm, like, I'm not a hater. I actually like Ben Shapiro. He's my go-to, though. He's my go-to right now because he comes on and he has his morals and his ethics and his well-thought-out logic and reason and his values, and he lives according to his beliefs. I respect all that. But he sits there with a furrowed brow and his piece of pen and paper and goes, Neh. and this is why it's wrong, and this is how it's supposed to be, and this is how it should be done. But you don't start anything. You just come on camera and just say that shit day in and day out, and you bitch, moan, and complain, and, and bring attention to, well, this was said here, and at this school they did this, and they attacked this person. Dude, create some kind of change. Affect change with all your goddamn money, man. Make something different. Alicia, you want to jump on? She said what? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm bringing on my roommate and good friend. Her name is Alicia. She's fantastic. She's into Reiki, and she has a lot of health knowledge and a lot of good things to talk about and to share. She's a good person, a good soul, and I would like to introduce her for the first time on the podcast. Billy G, take her in. You got gotcha. you. This is sweet Headset. Alicia. Headset. No. Oh, my God. Just put it on and sit down. Make sure hello, bring, hello. Just make Sweet sure Alicia, talk, part of the know. Irish Spaghetti family. You hear your own voice. Yeah. Okay, I look all right. You do. I'm mad at it. She always I does. I just got off work, a long casino life day. What's up? Yeah, she knows. She's hey, with the casino life. By the way, life. the camera I just got worked. I charged a couple days ago, so we got double angles coming. Oh, soon. come on, man! Where we could just snap back, got. and you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, so, so all right, and I know something that you wanted to talk about. You wanted to talk about Reiki, and um, and sure. and is that's like newer, right, or is it? It's really not. It's like an ancient um, spiritual healing technique, which there's so many modalities to heal your body, no matter what 
You know, we are our own project, our own doctors every single day. We wake up and we say, hmm, how do I feel today? Like, it's literally, that's what you do. So we treat it as all these different modalities, but it's not the same for every person. That's what most people don't know. Every healing technique and energy shift is different because some people don't even know what it is until they get into it. And they're like, oh, shit. Like, I like to wake up and take these pills <laughs> And then these pills, and I slam a bunch of stuff. Well, yeah, but you're right. Isn't Reiki the alternative? Like, isn't that... Okay, she's into, like, a lot of natural healing and stuff like that, and I think that more people need to be on board with that because this isn't an issue, right? Like, everybody's just so goddamn medicated now, and then she has all this natural stuff for just about everything, right? Yeah, but that's everybody's... Everyone takes different herbs for different things, so we're our own little... Like I said, we're our own little psychologist every single day. You really got to think about that. Could you do something natural for any anything? Pain, uh, uh, anxiety, Absolutely. something like that. There's everything. always a natural. Yeah, every, like everything is different. It doesn't. I don't even know what to say about it right now. What does Reiki uh, heal? A Reiki heals. It shifts your energy so that you are. You can, unblock. you yeah, you can unblock all your chakras. Thank you. <laughs> Looking for the right. We're trying to shift my energy from casino life to healer yes, life. It's so different. Slide. No shit. Yeah. Whoa! Don't shift your energy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. See, I have to control that. But what people mostly don't know is that, like, when you get into it, it's just like any business that you get into. The the person that's doing it has to set up force, and and for me, that has a separate job that is completely opposite. Uh, counterintuitive to healing, you know, um, it takes time for me to come home and adjust or set up for the day and clear my energy. Because if I don't clear mine first, then the other people are, I'm projecting other people's energy on the, on the client, on the patient. And so that I have to clear that first in my own head first, that way I can actually feel and tune in to that other, per, the next person. So it takes time to do that. Just like a massage or that's why they need 10 minutes of like prep time. Like, Hey, I want that, my sheets clean. And you know, I want my energy, my space special to my client. Yeah. You know? And everything should be treated that way. Just like a freaking doctor. We just don't, you know, get paid. You know, obviously we didn't go to school that long, so, so it's different, but everybody learns through their own experiences too on how to heal people. Cause everybody has different shit going on. Yeah. No shit. Okay. Let me ask you this, right? All right. So if you haven't done it in like a real long time, like let's say you have never done Reiki before, are you all full of those chakras and shit like that, that are like, like like driving you nuts and stuff. That's you good, know what I mean? Like, does yeah. it build up over time? Absolutely. Everything builds up over time. Yeah. It's just like, um, self-love. Um, let's call it masturbation. Things yeah. that you do to clear. These are good things. I mean, that's actually a very healthy thing. It's, it's called oming. Um, so, home. Exactly. Home. I, do you know why? Cause, yeah, cause I'll, picture. cause I'll turn around and go, is someone home? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did I hear that last night? Was that you? No, I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> exactly. I've had many ohms, but again, you have to heal yourself. That way you can tell the person or your partner how you like to be healed. Yeah. So that can go many, many ways. So you have to be able to help yourself. And that's why I fell in love with it because I learned how to do that and calm myself down with actually, I have taken so little medication compared to a lot of people. And again, not to judge because we all have our own shit. Trust me. But I get, but I have an addictive, um, personality in my family, multiple ones. And I'm the one that chose to be addicted to fitness instead of a ch chose to be addicted to alcohol or drugs or go through rehab. So there's things that like, I can say that I have, I know what works for me, but that doesn't work for everybody. I know people that this is nothing. Reiki is a very light, more energy shifting. And for me now that I've been through so much shit and I've done DMT, I've done ayahuasca. I just haven't gone to the jungle and done it. So I, that's the next step for me is that like Peru I, or something oh, like that, like the ultimate, Oh, that's the ultimate. Oh, baby. Oh, Peru. Oh, exactly. so shit. Anyone that want to sponsor? Let's go together. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So that's the basic. It's really not, it's hard to explain, but I incorporate, um, something called hoppe, which is a tobacco medicine that I like people to try. If, Do you again, smoke it? Like, is that, no, it's, a, it's actually blown yeah. it's so hard. And that's why I kind of wanted my phone because it's hard to describe. It's like taboo and it's a, a tobacco that's blessed by different tribes. It's like, I don't know if I'm talking to you or talking to. No, no, no. Basically so both. Hard. Yeah. So you like, know what I mean? Like if you're talking to the camera, you're talking sure to them, but okay. I'm, yeah, Sorry, I got guys. you. But I'm working timer. off. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. So what was the question? <laughs>
Um, okay, so, all right, so now it's a tobacco mix, but you um, blow it to yeah, them, like that's the whole point? It's actually blown through your nose, so it, there's a tepe that's used, That's called. it's called a tepe that's used from one person to the other, yeah. from the healer to the patient, or really whatever, good. or to myself, a caripe that is blown into myself to self uh, it's so hard to explain because it sounds so No, weird. but you're like really knowledgeable all in, on just, all this stuff. I've you just, know what's up. I mean, I've done it for a while, but again, it's not for everybody. At least it's not an illegal substance. It's literally tobacco. I've never, ne- I've smoked probably 10 cigarettes in my life, maybe when it was in 1920, whatever. Yeah. And like, man, eh, you know, like social, whatever. And I was like, ew, this, like I wanted to, I started to kiss someone. I was like, ew, this tastes like shit. I never want to taste like that. And that really turned me off. Actually, that was the reason I was like, nah, I'm good. But to this type of tobacco is is mixed with other plants and seeds, and I don't know how, but they mix it so that it's blown into into your nose, and it's like a blast of energy into your frontal, you know, your cortex brain. or exactly. whatever. I, yeah, I want to yeah. say that, but I don't want to be like too like I'm not that I'm not a freaking scientist when it comes to that shit. But no, it's okay. We're all scientists on the show. Corpse. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so this is Vegas, also. Yeah, yeah. No, um, no, but you know what you're talking about. You just speak it how you want. You know what you're talking about. Yeah, but it's um, it blasts this energy into your mind that you. For me, again, everybody's different. Some people, you know, completely. Uh, vomit or do other things and it clears you out but the initial is like a 10 two to 10 minute like mushroom high where i feel that there's clarity or i knew i i set my intentions first and i asked myself questions what do i need today what what am i needing to block am i needing to and not in another person I'm just talking about me because you're allowed to be selfish to help yourself yeah because sure because if you're not okay yourself you can't help the next person for your kids for whoever you know so this is like a two to 10 minute, the hop a is a two to 10 minute, like, um, blast of energy where it helps you kind of, um, calibrate, calibrate recalibrate and, and figure out your own shit really. But I like to, um, guide people through whatever they're thinking to help figure it out. Just like you're doing in a second when I'm on the spot. So it's different for everybody. Like I said, so you got to play shaman and then counselor or therapist mm-hmm. and kind of like go yeah. through the whole, right. Pretty yeah, much. But I love that because I've had a lot of interesting people in my path in the last, I don't want to say how many years old I am, but yeah, enough in Vegas. Come on, years. 19. Who cares? Yeah. What? <laughs> Anyways. So we're not there yet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> to all of your followers. <laughs> oh my God, I barely subscribed the other day. I was like, click. Oh shit, I need to start Thanks watching this. No, know, yeah, right? we love it, man. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, it's different for everybody, but then I like to do um, light massage. I just got cupping, a whole new cupping technique, which is amazing, which is for therapists as well, but I just got it at Amazon. That was what was in the package today. Oh, no shit. Yeah. Um, so uh, scraping grass and tool that, again, if your body is using different I don't know do different tools do different things no matter what so I just like to use all the different things that I can and and everybody can say yes or no don't you put like smoke in the cup like you light a match put it in there and then right the oxygen sucks the skin up is it is that what what cupping is I don't know like you know those things that make circle on you um oh no it's this is a I'm a shaman too (laughs) Obviously, I don't know shit about this, so you know. Oh my god! Yeah. So funny. Um, no, the cupping is a whole new technique for uh, usually for massage therapists, but I need it for my own back. And so this, there's a scraping technique where you use to get blood flow and your blood flow through your whole body. So it's a tool that again, wherever your body needs it, but your your every part of your body is also connected to a part of your brain where you have an emotional thought you have a logical thought so all these nerves that maybe release an energy you can something else can come up that you don't even realize which is why like massage and like other body uh, nerve endings are good like your feet you know reflexology is amazing because that's all triggered to different points of your body and your kidneys and everything your liver so like people just you know i don't know your body is your mind Oh my God! If, yeah, right, yeah. if your body's sick, your mind. Your body. If your mind is sick, your body. And that's basically opening after. it up, right? Like that's the yeah, whole point is absolutely. just to kind of like open everything up and get exactly. a like you know that insight and that outer look and shit again, like that. Most yeah, people, most people are scared. It can be two to ten minutes, but I, after that, even the hoppe specifically, I will journal for like two or three hours after my session to either need, maybe need to have a conversation with somebody because I have a hard time having just. You know, anybody having competition is, it's hard for everybody, but whether it be family or or whatever. So I don't know, just, I get all my shit out. 
after that. Do you go like, home. dear diary? You know no. what I mean? <laughs> it's like a little, it's a little pink book with like a little lock no, on I do it. it in my iPhone. Hell no. Like I got passwords for this shit. No Dude, way. isn't that the? I don't want no one open it up. No. I'm that's kidding. the one thing on the iPhone that I was like not expecting to use so much, but the notes, the notes? you use oh it so, so much. much. I got no, so many different. You know what I mean? You use that thing so much. I can't wait until the whole world's like paperless because I still got a shit ton of mail, and I'm like, man, we're still on this. You know what I mean? I don't know I mean? why we still have mail. That is well. I don't know. Yeah. I well it's because like people it's like, aren't smart. I don't can't have Ford phones. So. Yeah. I I I might, I might yeah. Have, like I'll get my know. bank statement and then I'll get another bank statement in the mail and I'm like, "Well, why?" Yeah, I'm like, you know, stop. "Yeah, no it's shit." So random. Uh, is that random topic? Yeah, yeah, no, no, but that's the best way to go about it. <laughs> Do you think that's going to last like much longer? Like we're still chopping down fucking rainforest to like, you know, Write a letter, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I don't the, body, know. The, the, the universe is con- also constantly producing. There's organisms, everything. You, I don't know. You just it depends what it is. I, I guess it's I guess We're it's constantly just constantly evolving. Yeah, you know, I I just don't see the the need for it as much as it was. Oh, it's bullshit. Like I, I remember back when I was like. Dearest Bethany, the war is great. You know what I mean? Like, I guess you when when writing a letter was like such a big deal. You know what I mean? Like, I could understand, but it now cute it's just wearing your like the fifth grade, yeah, yeah. So you wrote a Valentine. That's funny. <laughs> that was cool. I that choo was cool. choo choose you, you. Notes in class. Yeah, that was cool. That was about it. I choose. <laughs> I choo choo choose you. Remember oh, the that sense? That's the sense. That was Mar oh, or Ralph's uh, thing to Lisa. Thing. Yeah, Anyways. man. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate your No, you, a hey, you rock. I'm going to see what I can Say do. Uh, Alicia, Alicia, Alicia. Sweet Alicia. I do not have a channel, well but I am. Instagram yes, right? I'm on Instagram, Alicia Melilani. You're welcome to join me in my meditation or I do live yoga streams once in a while. So you can join me. Thank you. You're the bomb. And you came on here and murdered it. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Oh, you God, came on here and murdered it. Yeah. So interesting. <laughs> <laughs> she killed that, man. <laughs> We're surrounded by talent, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Jesus. It's all ladies. around us. The Irish Spaghetti family so, is growing. So, you growing. guys, since throughout the life of the show, you've kind of seen me like do mushrooms and talk about spirituality and the universe. Before that, I was kind of like into, not into all this, before I was aware of all these things and these different practices and the validity of them, this woman right here was the first one that I ever meditated with, and she introduced me to the Hop Ace session, and... Uh, Interesting about the hopping she was talking about, like it's tobacco based, and tobacco is actually a very powerful nootropic. It's a mind opening type drug, if you will. That's why people are so addicted to it, amongst many other things. But yeah, so she did that with me in the first place, and I did something called Cambo, which I'll get into at some point later. But uh, yeah, that was my first introduction to spiritual practice, and you know, kind of getting into that stuff. And then when I had my uh, my own experiences, it just expanded even that much further. And um, somehow we ended up living together. Like we used to work together at the Cromwell when I met her. I was a pit boss and a dealer and she was a dealer there and um, years went by and she introduced me to these things and, you know, our lives went in different directions and now we've converged again. And that's why I kind of wanted to introduce her and bring her on the show because she has a lot to say. She has a lot of value. She has a good spirit and she has a lot to talk about, things that even like are beyond my own understanding. So another another great one, man. You you, you met Johnny Tsunami on one of the past episodes, yeah. the man, the legend, the one that made all this happen for us. He's going to be on the show as well. Like we talked about before. We're going to expand the Irish Spaghetti family. That's Alicia. And you're going to see more and more of us coming on this show, man. And again, we appreciate so much everything that we get and everything that you guys have done for us. Every comment, every like, hate, love, doesn't matter. Just any of the attention, we really appreciate that do shit, man. regular cigarettes do that at Yes, all, they're right? a powerful nootropic. No shit. But they have all kinds of poisons and bad things in them in general. But that's why, uh, like for me, like I do my best thinking when I'm smoking a what, cigarette. What about regular, like just like... Off the field tobacco. Any tobacco. Oh, no matter what, it's, it's just be bad. It's nicotine. Tobacco has nicotine. Nicotine is what's the nootropic. Um, you could distill it. I don't care if you turn it into a liquid or you snort it, put it in your veins, smoke it, it doesn't matter. It's going to have that effect on your mind, your cognitive function. Didn't it start off as like Indians were selling it like in trade and stuff, right? I don't know how it started off. It's been around for a long fucking time. Like so, when everybody's had the dude, corn cob every time a, a new civilization gets established, the first thing we make, there. we make booze and yeah. tobacco. That's what we do. Potatoes and tobacco, to- man. Yes. I love it. And it's still going that strong wacky today. Tobacco. That wacky tobacco. That wacky tobacco. Tobacco. So what do you think, man? Do we have an outro video? We we're, do. We're at, do we're at a nice stopping Dr. point Phil? here. Do you remember the Dr. Phil? Yeah, man. Dr. Phil. Yeah. Okay, all right. So th- this is an interesting one um 
Hopefully the sound comes through. We've been having some tech issues again. I set it up the way it's supposed to be, so bear with us. If it doesn't, I'm sorry. I'll put it on our website or something like that. I'll put it on Facebook so you can watch the video. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, all right, so you want to go ahead, set it up, okay, set it up. So he showed me this, so you're better suited. All right, so I saw this video so many years ago, and it was one of the greatest videos I've ever seen. And it kind of like, it kind of ages like fine wine because you've seen what a piece of shit Dr. Phil is. He's just this TV doctor that gives pseudo advice to everybody. He's, he's a He's a... Fucking mess. And he came from Oprah and he's ridiculous. But anyway, so back when we're from Vegas, so bum fights was huge to us. Yeah. Bum fights was huge to us. So when they were when bum fights was like in its heyday, he had got the the creator of bum fights to come out to LA, flew him to LA, and he wanted to talk to him. And he knew exactly the angle that Dr. Phil was gonna play. And it was gonna be exploiting people and making money off of like, you know, uh, uh vulnerable people in dumb places and stuff like that, like homeless or drunk or something like that and it seemed rather familiar to him because Dr. Phil does that exact same thing it's the basis it's the of his thing. entire show everything that that guy does Dr. Phil does just on a much so. larger scale so he he invites him out they show this little like montage video of bum fights and everybody in the whole like studio audience is all appalled and stuff like that and Ooh. then the yeah, boo. and then the guy comes out dressed just like Dr. Phil he has he, yeah. he has a ball cap on he looks no he shaved young. his head dude oh he yeah. I thought it was a ball cap. Dude, but. he must have been working on this in his dressing room. <laughs> and then just said, because Dr. Phil never would have let that and go. And Dr. Again. Phil's reaction is the exact opposite of Anthony Cumia's, wherein he doesn't want that conversation or that fight. And yep. he escorts him off the show. But this shit is gold. So I hope the sound comes through. Um, we're going to play the video now and uh, we'll see what happens. So, yeah. Do Ladies you think and gentlemen, he knew he was going to like lose that argument? No. You know what I mean? No, I, I think that it really just caught him so off guard. Like, it, <laughs> I'm not going to talk to you. Really? Then why'd you fly him out there? All right, here we go. Oh, shit. All right, all right, all right. Ready? Ready. And action. It's a sick world. Stop the tape. Stop the tape. <laughs> He looks just like him. <laughs> he looks like him <laughs> for like 20 years. He looks like a skinny Les Grossman in Tropic Thunder. Dude. Dude. <laughs> dude, even his suit's really <laughs> similar, <laughs> too. That's the, what's so great about it. The best is watching Dr. Phil getting like this righteous Every indignation. Every time you bring a guest on the show, you exploit like, them and spread exactly what whatever problems they have to the whole world. Dude, look at him. You think oh, that's helping him? God, this yeah, is glorious. I'm telling you, he met his match, dude. He couldn't argue that. It's like, oh, well, I do what you do. You know but what? if he was a real fucking dude, like he would have had that conversation. Oh, exactly. you are, huh? in his eyes and actually went through with him. This is gold. Huh? Even if it was a no, lie and said, oh, I'm helping you. people. Yeah, no, no, I'm not. I'm yeah, not done no, talking not. to you yet. Yeah, you he took the coward's way out. That security has to carry him. And watch what he does behind scenes, dude. Watch what he does when he, when he goes behind the scenes and he's in the back. Sorry, he starts doing the bum fight, Smato. The funniest I, I part is the contrived like studio audience applause when when Phil makes his point versus when the other guy talks. You can tell it's on cue. It's so embarrassing, dude. This guy fucking rules. Man, I hope he's doing well to this day. Look at him, look at him. Fun fights, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know his fucking stock ridiculous. rose after that shit, man. What I saw. It's hilarious. They made that shit illegal. It's like smut. It is smut. It is smut. But, I mean, but you know what? Gonna but so is smut, and that's legal. Yeah, yeah, really. So it's an interesting point. But just wanted to end on a notable upswing. Um, we have anything else to cover, my friend? No, man, that was good. All right, guys. Well, this has been an interesting impromptu off the cuff episode. Um, as always, we will see you again in a couple of days. We appreciate everything, like we always fucking say. There's more to come. Our produ our production values are going to go up. We're going to invest more into the show. We really care about what we're doing. Our hearts are in this. Always remember, have your conversations, not their conversations. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family. Talk to your community. Let's be people again. Let's be understanding. Let's have love. Let's have peace. And let's have good conversations. God bless. We'll see you next time. <laughs>